Just as you have favorite fairy tales and stories, the Paiute Indians of long ago loved to hear the old legends told over and over again. The Paiute Indians lived mainly in Utah. According to the Paiutes, it was Coyote who taught mankind how to survive on the earth. Our first story, The Firebringer, we'll see how Coyote taught the Indians about fire. Our second story, a Kiowa legend, called How Sayende Brought the Buffalo to the Indians. The Kiowa Indians are Plains Indians. They have lived on the southern plains around Oklahoma and Kansas for as long as time itself. They hunted the buffalo. Sayende, who brought many things to the Kiowa, was responsible. Now listen to the tales of the Firebringer and how Sayende brought the buffalo to the Indians. Long ago in the time of the beginning, when animals and humans talked to each other and lived together, there was an Indian boy called the Firebringer. He was of the Paiute tribe, with shiny dark skin and long black hair. He loved to run with the coyote, who was the friend and counselor of his people. They would hunt together in the summer. The boy caught fish with his hands, while the women dug delicious roots. In the summer, times were good. Now, the winter was not so good. The people were cold and, and unhappy. This was before the tribes knew about fire. The boy spoke to the coyote, asking his advice. How can we help my people? They cannot keep warm in this cold. What can we do? The coyote thought, and then he said, You and I will go to the burning mountain and bring back fire. It will be dangerous, but it is the only way. Gather a hundred strong men and women who are your best runners. The boy went to gather the runners, but they paid no attention to him. They didn't know what fire was. But the boy continued to talk about the fire. And as the people got colder and colder, one by one, they joined him. Soon he had his hundred runners. The coyote explained exactly what was to be done. First, in front, would be the coyote and the boy. Then the fastest runners would follow them, and the slowest would be last. They went toward the west, over the high, snow-covered mountains. Then through dark, windy forests, the runners grew afraid. Coyote said to them, We will rest here. In the morning, one of you will stay here until the fire comes. You will know the fire, because it is red like a rose. But it is not a rose. When you see the fire, you will know it. In the morning, they headed west, leaving one man to wait for the fire. The people wondered if the fire was an animal or an enemy of some kind. Coyote explained, Fire can be an enemy or a friend. It can hurt, but it can also help and serve us. If it is covered with rocks and sticks, it can be used to warm the people. The last runner was left to wait for the fire. Coyote and the boy continued on to the burning mountain. It was very high, with smoke and fire pouring out of its top. At night, the fire spirits danced on the mountaintop. Coyote made himself look thin and weak and unimportant and went up the mountain. The fire spirits saw him, but ignored him because he looked harmless. As the fire spirits began to dance, Coyote stole a burning stick and ran down the mountain. The fire spirits saw him running with the fire and began to chase him. 
Coyote was tired and breathing hard when the boy took the burning stick from his friend and ran with the fire spirits fast behind him. The boy ran as fast as he could until he came to the runner they had left behind. This runner took the burning stick and ran on. The stick was passed from runner to runner. The fire spirits chased each runner until they were stopped by the snowy mountains. The swift runners continued through the day and night until they came to the land of the Paiute. They surrounded the fire with rocks and put sticks on it and were warmed by it, just as Coyote had told them. From that time on, the boy was called Firebringer. The name Firebringer was passed on to the coyote because he had earned the name. To this very day, coyote's fur is thin and yellow, as if burned along his sides. Perhaps because of the fire stick he carried in his mouth, whose flames licked at his sides as he ran down the burning mountain. Sayan Day was coming along, and he saw all the animals singing and dancing, and he asked them what they were doing. Owl and Dragonfly told him it was a sun dance, to show the sun how much they loved it. Coyote said, we are having a fine time, but we are hungry, we have no food. Fox said, we are all getting weak because we have no food. Sayende felt very sorry for the animals. As he watched the dancing, he thought of the white crow. Why is the crow so fat and his feathers so smooth? He must have plenty of food. Where does he get his food? Nobody knew. Now, white crow always carried a bow and some arrows in a special case, and he never put it down. Sayende decided the answer to white crow's food must be in the case. Sayende wondered how he could get the case. Then he thought of a plan. He told Fox and Coyote and Owl and Dragonfly to watch White Crow when he left the dancing grounds to find out where he lived. They agreed. Sayende and his friends started to flatter White Crow. Why aren't you singing? You have such a beautiful voice. White Crow was very pleased to help the singers. Sayende offered to hold the bow and arrow case for White Crow. As White Crow began singing and drumming, all the animals crowded around him so he couldn't see Sayende. Sayende took the bow and arrows out of the case and laid them down. He reached way into the case and pulled out a piece of meat, buffalo meat. He thought to himself, I have never tasted anything so delicious. This would be good for the Indians. The singing finished, and Sayende gave White Crow his case. As White Crow flew away, Fox and Coyote and Owl and Dragonfly all watched. He flew way up and over the nearby hill. Sayende told his friends, he would stay behind and think of some way to find out where the buffalo meat was hidden. He hid near a bush and changed himself into a little puppy. He wanted White Crow's little daughter to find him. Then the little daughter came walking along and saw the puppy. The puppy began licking her ankles and she picked him up. She wanted to keep him. But when she took him home, White Crow didn't like him. I never saw a puppy with a mustache before. Sayende had forgotten to change his mustache. White Crow's little daughter started to cry. So he agreed she could keep the puppy if she did not take him near the meat. Sayende ate well that night, buffalo scraps. The next day, White Crow and his wife had to leave. He said to his daughter, Remember, don't take the puppy near the meat. That is our secret. 
Then he and his wife left. Soon the little white crow got tired of playing with the puppy. I'm going to show you our secret place where we keep our meat. Sayende pretended he wasn't interested. The little girl picked him up and took him over to a big, deep hole that had been covered with a rock. Down in the hole were all the buffaloes in the world. Father buffaloes, mother buffaloes, and baby buffaloes. Indian people should have this food to share. They will never be hungry again. He started barking and jumped down among the buffaloes. The buffaloes rushed out of the hole into the sunshine. They sounded like thunder as they ran. White Crow heard the thunder and flew back home as fast as he could. He knew it was the buffaloes. As the last buffalo came up out of the hole, Sayende came out and turned back into himself. He turned to the buffaloes. You will live here in this country, wherever the grass shall grow, to the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south, you will roam. You will be the food for the people of this country. The buffalo listened to Sayende. They wandered and spread out over the plains where they fed and clothed the people. And that's how the buffalo came to the Indians. The Indians came to depend on buffalo meat for a large part of their diet and on its skin for clothing, shelter, and many other uses. In winter, the warm skin was used for robes and blankets. No part of the buffalo was wasted. Without this magnificent animal, the Kiowa, as well as other Plains tribes, possibly would have died out. Today you have heard just two stories of the American Indian. You can find many more in your school or public libraries. Go, read and enjoy the stories of the American Indian. And share a story with a friend, so our tales will never end. The preceding program was funded in part by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.